What's going on everybody? Welcome to another OpenCV with Python tutorial. In this video, we'll hopefully be wrapping up the creation of our own Har Cascade file for object detection of really any object. That's the whole idea here. I'm almost done uploading the data set that we just created. Um, so now I'm back into the terminal right now and we're gonna do a few things. So uh, first of all, I just re-logged back in. So I'm gonna change directory into that workspace that we created. And we should see that the files are coming up here. What we need to have here by the time we're done is that negative directory, the negative um, or the bg.txt, which is that description file. And then we also need our positive image file. So for me, that's that little image of a watch. If you need that image, go to the tutorial link in the description. You can grab that image. But like I've been saying this whole tutorial, I think it's really better if you use an image that you find interesting. So up until this point, you could really use any image. I mean, just take a picture of anything, convert it to a 50-50 and train using the three commands we're about to run because these negative images are good for anything basically besides people, <laughs> okay? So you can train to track really anything you want. Okay, it says the transfer is done. Let me make sure I have everything I need. Right, bg.txt, neg, opencv, which we just we installed a long time ago, and the watch 50 by 50. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and make dir. We need two dirs. We're going to make dir um, data. This is where our cascade information is going to go later on. And then we're also going to make dir info. This is where the positive images are about to go. So uh, first we're gonna create the samples. The way that we do this is with opencv underscore create samples. So opencv underscore create samples. Now this is kind of a long um, command, but I'm gonna type it out because uh, each part kind of needs to be explained anyway. So first you say what the, what the image is that we're gonna create samples from. So the image is watch5050.jpg. If you have a different 50 by 50 image, that's, you put that in there and really you can, you can do it first with this watch, then take a picture of like your phone um, and then put your phone in there and you'll, you'll have trained for a phone and, and you can just keep going um, and do that. So a uh, USB drive or something. So watch 5050.jpg, cool. The next thing we need is the BG. So this is the background information. This is that background text file. That's BG.txt. The next thing that we want is the info. Where is all the info gonna go? And uh, this first thing is actually the info file. This will be the positive file that this create samples is actually gonna make for us. So we're gonna put that into info slash info .lst. That'll be just like our bg.txt file, only it'll have the image path, how many objects in that image, and their location, or z. So uh, that's that. Then dash PNG output, where are we gonna put the positive images that it's gonna generate? We're just gonna put them in the info directory. And then here we can set some optional parameters like uh, max X angle, we'll just say 0 0.5. Uh, max Y angle, we'll say is 0 0.5. And then max Z angle, 0 0.5. And then finally, the number uh, we can probably use 1950. Let me, um, what I want to do is open up, let's see how many we actually have here. Properties. So we have, yeah, we've got 1964 total. So we'll use 1950, I think that'll be good enough. And then we'll actually end up using even less and I'll explain why when we get there. So, um, this will create 1,950 positive images. So go ahead and hit enter. It's creating the samples and it's done. It does it that fast, it's crazy. So let me go over to WinSCP here. Let's update this, all right? And let me pull up our just our di working directory. And so we go into info and it'll take a second to load all these images, but here are all the images. And then this is like our bg.txt, only it's uh, made for this. So as you can see, this is just the list of all the images, how many objects appear in each image. So it's just one, the starting point or basically the rectangle location of the image. So X, Y of the upper left and then the width and height. So the width and height should be the same every single time uh, from the starting point that is. Anyway, 
um, so so that's our info, and then our images are pretty cool. So I'll bring those. I'll just bring one up just to show you what it looks like. So it's hard to see really well, but you know these are people running on a track, and my watch is actually appearing over here, kind of in the in the background, and that's how it's making a a positive image. But it's pretty cool. So as you can imagine, and you can see it's it's rotated a little bit and kind of angled back a bit. So it's kind of neat how, how that works. Um, but anyway, it does a you know thousand or nine one thousand nine hundred fifty of those. So once you've got that made, that operation should be really fast. So we now we have our positive images already done. So that's pretty cool. Now we need to create our vector file. So if you already had positive images that you hand labeled. Um, for whatever crazy reason. You didn't need to do that step, but you still need to do this step. So this step, same starting command. Uh-oh, did we disconnect already? Hope not. No, okay. Uh, open CV underscore create samples. And then you specify where is that info uh, file located, the one that describes all the positive images. That's located in info-info.lst. Then for the vector file, we're going to do num uh, 1950 total. And then the width is 20. The height is 20. And then where do we want the vec file to be saved to? We'll just save it in this directory as positives.vec. So we'll save that. And we do 20 by 20 because uh, the, the larger you make these images, like 20 by 20 is like kind of the average that people will recommend you use kind of. But the larger you make these, the much longer it's going to take to run the training process. But as you'll see in the very end, because we used a 20 by 20, the actual detection will be a 20 by 20 detection rather than if you remember the face detection that we had, it would like encase your whole face. You could find the whole face with a, a nice rectangle. Whereas in this case, it's not, not quite gonna work that well. Um, but it will still find it. And if you wanted to use larger, you could. It will just simply take a lot longer. I wanted to keep us on a small server, but if you want to, you can make this larger and you will actually detect the full size of whatever you're looking for, but you don't have to. You will still find it with these because the way a hard cascade works, it breaks down very uh, small features, basically. If you saw, it's almost like a zero and one. It's very binary types of features. So the size... Um, doesn't matter as much. It just simply doesn't. So anyway, that was our vector file. And now we're ready to bring it all together and actually train the cascade. Now this part takes a long time. This operation on this server, um, this we've got about two gigs of RAM. A good idea actually would be to clear the cache or something like this, but we'll just, we'll let it go. Um, so... Uh, so what we're going to run here is we're going to run opencv underscore train cascade, train cascade. Okay. Um, then we specify where is the, um, where's the output going to go? So dash data, we're going to put it in the data directory. Keep in mind, you have to have these directories already created. Did I close out? I think I closed out of, <laughs> I did. I closed out of the WinSCP. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, make sure data exists as a directory before you run this. It won't create it. Um, so data goes to data. The vector file will be positives.vec. The uh, dash background file will be bg.txt. And then the dash num pause is going to be 1800. 1800. Do not use a bigger number. Stick with 1800, I promise. Dash uh, numneg. I'll explain why in a moment. Numneg will be 900, half of the positives. And then the num stages will use 10 because we're not crazy. And then the width uh, will be 20, height 20. Okay. Even though you say num pause 1800, it will start at 1800 and as you go through each stage, it will increase that number and go to higher numbers. So if you said 1964, you're not gonna get to stage one. So keep that in mind, use, you know, leave a nice few hundred leeway there. Num stages, the more stages you use, the more accurate-ish it's gonna be. 
But the more stages you use, the much longer it will take to train. Like stage one or stage zero will be pretty quick. Stage one will be a little slower. Stage 10 will be even a little more slower than that one. And as you go on, getting through stage 10 is like 10 times as slow as getting through stage one. It's very slow. So this process, even though 10 stages, it, it'll probably take two to four hours. So I'm going to start. Well, no, actually, if you already started, control C, get out of that. Stop that. What you want to do actually probably with something that's going to take four hours is it's the same command end with an at sign and go to the front of this command and type N O H U P no hup. And what this is going to allow you to do is run this command and the output will go to an output file. It doesn't really matter. And it'll start training and you'll be able to exit. So, um, Actually, we'll go ahead, we'll run it without the and sign just to make sure the command is correct. Um, but then we'll cancel it and redo it. So run it. So it starts running. We're doing the positive and the negatives. Uh, let me duplicate the session really quick here. Uh, we go into top here and you can see uh, right now we're pretty much using all the memory. We may actually wind up running out of memory here. We might have to use less. We're really close. We're going to, we're going to, We'll probably get kicked out uh, of the server here in a second. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, you need about two gigs of RAM, like I said. So this is it training. Everything looks to be successful. One thing to note, um, as long as you use all of the same parameters except for training stages, you can like you can train to like a hundred. Let's say you train to ten stages and you output a cascade that was created from ten stages, and later on you want to train to twenty. What you can do is you can run the same command so long as all of the other parameters are the same. You'll have the data that leads up to uh, stage 10 and you can begin training at stage 10. So long again as all the other parameters are identical. So for example, this is zero stage. When it gets done training zero stage, it'll train one stage. I can actually cancel this and then when, anytime I restart the command, you just you pick up right where you left off. So it's actually pretty cool because you can do that. Um, and it'll probably be useful because you'll probably blow your RAM based on cash. <laughs> uh, we didn't, I didn't set up any swap memory, so <laughs> we might hit, hit that limit and get booted. Uh, but we should be able to get at least a few stages out. Hopefully we'll get to 10, but we'll see. So anyways, um, uh, that's all for now. Just let this run. Um, you can either let it run up or like if you want to run this overnight, but you don't want to leave your computer or your terminal open, you can actually break that. Just control C, hit the up arrow and use no hup. And what no hup is going to do is it runs the command in the background and you, and you can leave your session and it'll still continue running. Normally, like if this was running and you closed out of your terminal, it's going to log your user out and the command won't run. But if you use no hup, it'll run just in the background. So, and that's what it's doing here. And we can come back over here and just make sure it is indeed running, uh, which it is. Okay. So go ahead and let that run. Just let it run for as long as it's willing to run. <laughs> um, and then when all that is done, you should have so many stages. If you don't make it to 10, um, you can get to, well, let me, uh, let's go ahead. Let me pause this real quick and let me pull back up our server real, real quick. Okay. Brought the, uh, the uh, win SCP back up. So if we go, this is currently running and we got okay amount of free information. Anyway, going into data, uh, we'll refresh this hopefully. And oh, I guess we're not, we're probably not through maybe stage one yet. Uh, but once we're through stage one, we should get like an XML file that uh, has some information there. Uh, so once that's done, we'll get there. Now, if you open up another terminal, one good idea that you might have, especially since we're running so close to possibly running out of RAM, eventually what probably will happen is your your RAM cache will build up and you'll get kicked out, especially if you don't have swap. So one thing to do is we'll break out a top here and uh, you can type in like crontab-e, uh, we'll use nano. So hit two, sorry, <laughs> probably went too fast there. Uh, and then just go ahead and do star star, 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 star. So five stars. And what that's going to do is every minute, it's going to run the following. Just run sudo echo one, uh, I suppose greater than sign. 
uh, slash proc slash sys slash vm slash drop underscore caches. Take that line, copy, paste, paste, and then change this to two, this to three, at yes, save. So control X, yes to save, enter. And then service cron restart. And then now hopefully every minute, oh, I don't have HTOP installed. Um, I like HTOP, we'll just get that real quick. So I have to get install HTOP. Um, it should be pretty quick, yep. Bring that up. And then now we can see how are our CPUs doing good. We've got memory usage. We're actually at a pretty good. We actually have quite a few free. We had a huge cache though. So that cache, as it runs up, you'll max this out. And if you have no swap left, uh, your DigitalOcean server will reset. <laughs> and so that's no good. So, um, so you just leave it like this and you should be good. Let's see if we got past stage one yet. No, we still have not passed a stage. I'm kind of bummed out. I wish I could see it now. I kind of want to see the output. I forget where the output even goes. I think it may go to the root directory, if I recall. Let's refresh real quick. I can't remember where the output said it was going to go. Does it say here? Yeah, it sends it to no hook out. Maybe it's in the workspace. Yeah. Make sure we didn't get an error. Okay, so training stage zero goes through the negatives. Okay, so it's still going. We're on currently this spot. Um, it'll go through quite a few. We'll probably, I think it's like, you'll get to probably like 60 or something like that before stage one is done. As you can imagine, this takes a long time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and well, I'll pause it here. And hopefully when it gets to the first one, maybe we can... I'll explain what I was talking. Actually, I'm gonna let this run and then I'll come back with uh, the completed version and I'll talk about the addition. So I think we'll go ahead and break the video here. And then in the next tutorial, I'll talk about you know the completed file, um, what you can do to continue building on it. Or if you don't wanna wait any longer, you can cancel it and build up to that specific point. We'll talk about that. And then we'll actually incorporate it and test it and see how well it worked. So um, as long as you're getting output that looks like this either here or to your nohup.out file um, here, uh, you're totally fine. Everything's running as it should. And if you use nohup, you can log out and you're totally fine. Just remember to uh, set up the cron tab to clear caches because otherwise you're going to run out most likely of memory, even though it'll be cached, you'll be, it'll be all stuffed up and then the server will shut down. We'll restart and then it won't restart your command. So anyways, uh, Questions, comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.